So Cowboys owner Jerry Jones went on a pretty wild rant today about how not only is he the best owner for the Cowboys, but gave several reasons why, then basically made it seem like he's never gonna call it quits, even though he's almost 82 years old. So I've got to talk about that, teams inquiring about John Mechie the third, Trent Williams continuing his holdout, and much more right after. All right, first up, wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster is heading back to the Kansas City Chiefs. He officially signed a one-year deal with the team. I think it was today, maybe last night, but he was seen out there today at practice working and wearing number nine. That's the same number he wore for the team back in 2022. And when Juju was released back on August 9th, the Patriots were still on the hook for $7 million. And so Juju signed a one-year vet men deal worth right around $1.2 million for the year. That is a much better deal than the Chiefs would have gotten Juju for a year and a half ago, as KC reportedly offered him a deal, but Juju opted for New England, signing a three-year, $25 million deal instead, which makes sense because the Patriots offered him a lot more money. But for more details on the situation and how he benefits the wide receiver room this year, I talked about that in my video today on the other channel, How About Those Chiefs? just in case you really care, but let's move on because another player that may find himself on a new team soon is Rams linebacker Ernest Jones IV. It was reported yesterday that the Rams granted him permission to seek a trade after the two sides failed to reach an extension this offseason. Jones acknowledged about a month ago that he was looking for a new deal, so that's why it wasn't completely a surprise to see that he requested a trade but apparently that was fake news. After those initial reports surfaced, Ernest actually tweeted out on X that quote, I never asked for a trade, then proceeded to delete said tweet. Then today, Rams head coach Sean McVay said, he's right, he never requested a trade. However, the Rams have had some dialogue with teams regarding Jones. How many teams? I don't know, but it's at least more than one. The 2021 third round pick is only 24, and he's coming off a career year, tallying up 145 tackles and four and a half sacks. Losing him, by the way, would be yet another massive blow to the Rams defense after Aaron Donald surprisingly retired this offseason. Jones is also the play caller on defense, one of the leaders back there. So again, losing him would be a tough one if it happens. Now, a linebacker that was indeed traded was Trevis Gibson. The Jags shipped him out to Seattle in exchange for what Ian Rappaport said is a late round pick, so probably a sixth or a seventh. He was a fifth round pick himself of the Bears back in 2020 and had his best season back in 2021 when he had 39 tackles, seven sacks, and five forced fumbles. He signed with the Titans last year but only appeared in eight games and finished the year with just six tackles and a sack. He then signed with Jacksonville this offseason and was likely a cut candidate ahead of the 53-man roster cutdowns, but the Seahawks swooped in and traded for him before he could hit waivers. Seattle has been very active in recent days. They traded cornerback Michael Jackson to the Panthers for linebacker Michael Barrett, then traded edge rusher Daryl Taylor to the Bears. Another player that's reportedly been garnering some trade interest is Texans receiver John Mechie III. Jordan Schultz reported that multiple teams have reached out to the Texans to see if he would be available in a trade due to the plethora of receivers on their roster. It's unknown if Houston is willing to move on from him or not, but it's clear the interest is there. The Saints could reportedly use some help, whether that's Derek Carr or Spencer Rattler throwing them passes this season. Then, of course, the Commanders could also use help after recently trading away Jahan Dotson to the Eagles. Anyway, Mechie was a second-round pick out of Alabama back in 2022, but missed his entire rookie season after being diagnosed with leukemia. Thankfully, he beat the odds made his return to football last year, but finished the season with just 16 receptions for 158 yards and zero touchdowns. And as mentioned earlier, the Texans have a stacked receiver room with Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Robert Woods, and now the newly traded for Stephon Diggs. Plus, with tight end Dalton Schultz re-signing, Mechie is looking like their fifth or sixth option right now. So a change of scenery may just be what the former second round pick needs to get his career on track. And some other player news, the Cleveland Browns placed Nick Chubb on the pup list. Not a big surprise here, but it will make him inactive for at least the first four games of the season while he continues to rehab after that gruesome injury he suffered in week two last year. If you don't remember, his leg was basically snapped in half after a brutal tackle from Steeler safety Minka Fitzpatrick. He underwent multiple surgeries on his ACL, and while some initially wondered if he'd ever be able to play football again, the former All-Pro running back appears to be on track for a return sometime this season. 
Who knows when exactly that will be, but for the time being, Jerome Ford will be the man holding things down in the Cleveland backfield. And while we're on the subject of torn ACLs, Adam Schefter reported today that Titans linebacker Chance Campbell sadly suffered a torn ACL during the Titans' last preseason game against the Saints and is out for the year. This is actually his third straight knee injury three years in a row. He was a sixth-round pick back in 2022, but missed his entire rookie season with a knee injury and only played in four games last year before re-injuring that knee. The bummer here is that he was having a really solid preseason. He had 16 tackles, a sack, an interception, and two tackles for loss in the first two games alone. And this injury is a tough pill to swallow for the Titans, as this is the second linebacker they've lost for the season, with Garrett Wallow being placed on IR at the beginning of August for tearing his pec. Next up in some non-injury-related news, we had a massive contract today signed by one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Adam Schefter reported that the Cowboys and C.D. Lamb agreed today on a four-year $136 million deal that makes him the second highest paid non-quarterback in NFL history, right behind Justin Jefferson. The new deal also includes a $38 million signing bonus, which is the largest ever given to a wide receiver. So $136 million for four years comes out to $34 million per year, which is right behind Jefferson's $35 million per year deal. And uh, as we'll talk about here in a second with Jamar Chase, might set some things in motion for him. However, we got to talk about Jerry Jones, speaking of the Cowboys, and his insane quote that surfaced today during an interview that he did with longtime Cowboys beat writer Clarence Hill Jr. While we sadly don't have audio from that interview, I really wish we did because this quote is a doozy. Um, here's what he said, quote, I've done it all, so I have an ordinate amount of confidence that, cuss word, if anybody can figure out how to get this done, I can figure out how to get it done. I've been there every which way from Sunday and I have busted my ass a bunch, a bunch. And there's nobody living that's out cutting and shooting that can't give you a bunch of times they've busted their ass. So hell no, there's nobody that could blank come in here and do all the contracts and be a GM any better than I can. He then goes on to say that nobody can do what he does, not even his children who work in the front office with him, and they'll only be taking over if he gets hit by a car. Quote, the reason I don't let somebody else be the GM is because I don't have anybody that I will let do it to actually do it right, and they're gonna have to come to me, and because I know where it is that you're gonna have to pay for it. Jerry then finished by saying that another reason he's still the GM is because he loves doing it. He must also love having rosters brimming over with talent year in and year out, only to choke in the playoffs time and time again. I mean, that's what the Cowboys do. To Jones's credit, after he bought the team in 1989, though, they really did own the 90s. They appeared in three Super Bowls during that decade, winning all three. Uh, but their last appearance was nearly 30 years ago in 1996, technically the 1995 NFL season. And since then, the Cowboys have won five playoff games, losing 13 of them since 1996. And all the while, they've cycled through talented rosters only to disappoint their fan base year in and year out. And their lack of playoff success is basically now a running joke in the entire NFL world. So maybe just maybe, Jerry, it's time to let it go, or at least begin the process of bringing somebody else in, considering the fact this man is 82 years old come October. We all know this isn't going to happen, though, and unfortunately for Cowboys fans, Jerry seems like he's going to be holding it down in Dallas until he's six feet deep. To his credit, though, he did get a deal done with C.D. Lamb that I mentioned earlier, but he's got Micah Parsons to worry about and also Dak Prescott. So we'll see what Jerry can pull off next, even though I doubt it's going to be a Super Bowl win, at least for some time. Now, someone who's been holding things down on the O-line is 49ers left tackle Trent Williams. If you didn't know, though, Williams is yet to report to training camp as he's been seeking a readjusted deal from the team. And Jeremy Fowler reported today that the star tackle is planning to continue his holdout unless his contract is reworked. He went on to say that, quote, he is not going to be available until he gets his contract adjusted. He's trying to stay away from the team and is not overly stressed to have to be out there right now. Huh. Well, the season is right around the corner. He signed a six-year, $138 million contract back in 2021. So while he still has several years left on that deal, both 2025 and 2026 are not guaranteed years, meaning the 49ers could have an easy out of that contract next offseason, considering he'll be 37 next year. So while his current deal does have him as the fourth highest paid left tackle in terms of annual salary, 
The reason for the holdout likely has to do more with trying to secure guaranteed money than anything else. The holdout isn't new, as Williams hasn't reported to camp at all this offseason, but everybody has been so distracted by the Brandon Ayuk saga that we've hardly paid any attention to the Niners' most important piece along the O-line. So yeah, you have a lot of drama going on in Niner Nation right now, and unfortunately, this is the price you pay for having a roster full of premier talent, and uh, there's currently no update on the Brandon Ayuk situation either. Speaking of him, could he be a stealer? Could he stay? Question for another day. But for today, what do you guys make of all this with Trent Williams? Do you think he's going to land a new reworked deal? Or will the Niners be forced to trade him? I don't think that's going to happen. But let me know your best guess in the comments down below. Now, another player who was holding out, well, actually holding in technically is Jamar Chase. He still hasn't gotten a new deal, but he was back at practice yesterday for the first time all camp as a sign of good faith per Adam Schefter. He still has two years left on his rookie contract, but hasn't been shy about wanting a new deal. And with him returning, it's safe to assume he'll be possibly suiting up for week one. I don't think they're any closer on a deal at this point in time, but the CD Lamb deal getting done should hopefully help speed up contract negotiations between Jamar Chase and his representative and the team, the Bengals. Either way, Chase pretty much had to return this week with the season so close as he needs to get some reps in before just trotting out onto the field come game day. Next up, we have some news on the Patriots' new starting quarterback. The Pats played the Commanders last night, and both Jacoby Brissett and Drake May got a crack at some playing time. Brissett ended up opening the game, but after going two for four, just 19 yards, he took a sack and apparently injured his shoulder. He did finish the drive out, but that was the only series he played in. After the game, head coach Gerard Mayo said he'll be fine, and he could have gone back in and played if he needed to, but he did not need to because they wanted to see what Drake May could do. Well, May came in and played the rest of the first half and looked pretty great right away, leading an 11-play, 88-yard TD drive capped off by an 18-yard touchdown pass to running back Kevin Harris. He finished 13 of 20 for 126 yards and that one touchdown with no picks and also didn't take a single sack. So that was certainly a strong showing for May, and now we'll just have to wait for the team to announce their guy, likely within the next few days. And before I get out of here, even more news broke today. It's a bit of a surprising trade happening when the Packers traded for Titans quarterback Malik Willis in exchange for a 2025 seventh round pick. Willis was the Titans third round pick back in 2022, but never really landed as the Titans hopeful starter, got some opportunities, didn't do enough with it in their eyes. And so the Packers opted to go and get him for a very minimal cost. And uh, they're going to hope he does a bit better than Sean Clifford or Michael Pratt did during the Packers preseason games. Willis is only 25 years old as well. So maybe uh, he could be the backup QB. The Packers are Hoping for fingers crossed. Then it was also announced today that Seattle's top edge rusher, Uchina Nuosu, suffered an MCL sprain, and he's going to miss anywhere from two to six weeks. This injury happened in the Seahawks' preseason win over the Browns via a low-cut block that never should have happened, and I believe he got flagged for uh, the offensive lineman who made this block. And the tough thing here is, Nuosu missed 11 games last season after suffering a season-ending pectoral injury. So the injuries continue to keep going for him, which is pretty unfortunate. And with that, I'll see y'all next time after the wild cut-down shenanigans that are going to go down tomorrow. Don't break, start, start.